Hey everybody, it's Teresa. Welcome to my channel. I've been playing with the latest bargain bead box, the Spring Blossom Collection. Uh, and I've got a lot of stuff out here. <laughs> First of all, in case you're not familiar, Bargain Bead Box is a monthly subscription of beads and findings. It's $19.49 a month, and that includes shipping in the U.S. They have beautiful beads and findings. It's always curated around a different theme each month. And if you're a subscriber to the Bargain Bead Box, you get a 30% off coupon to use in Bead Box Bargains, which is their sister store. And you can use it as many times as you want to during the month. And they already have great prices. I have a coupon code. It's Teresa2. And I'll put it on the screen here and in the description box below, along with a link to the page to sign up for the subscription if you're interested. The coupon code will save you $2 off your first box if you sign up. Uh, I've been buying beads and findings for many years now and I really do believe that this is a good value. Uh, and here I have the 10 millimeter matte pink adventuring round beads natural it says and some of the bead caps that came in the box. And here I have the natural peridot gemstone chip beads. And here I have the 6 millimeter frosted glass beads, pink ombre slash gold. And here I have the dyed 8 millimeter rose quartz round beads. And here I have the loop part of one of the 18 karat 30.5 by 22 millimeter 18 karat gold plated toggle clasps. And I have a couple of the 10 millimeter adventuring beads and one of the 8 millimeter beads. And some of the bead caps that came in the box. A few bead caps from my stash. And I have this, oh, and I have a few of the uh, little rondell beads, the 3.5 by 3 millimeter crystal faceted rondell beads. It was a pastel mix, and I picked out the green ones. I had this little pendant in my stash this little rose quartz pendant that I'm going to use. Uh, I, it came from Beadbox Bargains. I can't remember if I bought a mix of their pendants or if uh, it was a free gift. It might have been a free gift. They always send a free gift when you place an order with them. Uh, and it's already wrapped for me, which is convenient. <laughs> so I'm going to use that. Uh, I've got some little tiny spacers, gold spacers from my stash and some uh, bead caps from my stash and of course I'm going to make a pair of earrings so in here I've got these little things which were the favorite my favorite thing in the whole box these 20 by 21 millimeter flower and bee enameled wreath charms and I have two of the uh, ear wires that came in the box the 24 karat gold 15 by 10 millimeter 24 karat gold plated stainless steel lever back ear wires and I have a couple of the 8 millimeter beads, like I'm going to have in the necklace. And I have a few of the little green rondelle beads and a few of my bead caps in there. Uh, I've got some pieces of my 22 gauge German style wire that I use a lot in gold. Uh, this is it. Yeah, it's Beadalon. German style wire is what I use. I have my uh, Softlex beading wire and fine. This is a 19 strand. Of course you can use any kind of bead stringing wire you want. Um, this is a champagne color but like I always say it doesn't really matter what color your bead stringing wire is. You're not going to be able to see it once you get all the beads on there. I've got my bead stoppers. I've got my oh I forgot uh, in somewhere one of these in here. <laughs> I've got a couple of wire guardians and a couple of 2x2 two two crimp tubes. I didn't want to... I've already got so many little dishes out here. I just put them in there with that. Uh, I use the beetle on crimp tubes. Uh, I have my chain nose pliers and my tweezer pliers. The tweezer pliers are Zeron. I have both pairs of my bent chain nose pliers. Uh, these are 
some I got from BB Craft many years ago, and these are called Glitter Line. Uh, I've got my crimping pliers, they're Beetle On, and my round nose pliers, I got those from BB Craft many years ago. I've got both pairs of my cutters. There's a run, and I use one pair for bead stringing wire and the other pair to cut head pins and eye pins and craft wire. And I've got my little New Orleans shot glass to put my little wires in when I cut them off. I'm going to have to empty him. He's getting full. <laughs> I think that's everything. Hold on, I'll get some of this out of the way and I'll get started. Okay, I'm going to start with the uh, pieces that go with the front part. This is going to be a lariat necklace. And uh, so I'm going to take one of my pieces of wire, my German style wire here. And I'm going to take my pliers and go down. These are about four inch pieces of wire. I'm going to go down maybe about an inch and a half here and make a 90 degree turn over the top of the pliers. Now I'll put my round nose pliers in here in the crook of the bend around those pliers facing me. I'm going to bend the wire back until it hits the tool. Can't go any further. Now I'm going to rotate the pliers till they're facing the table. I'm going to take the smaller piece of wire and bend it up here and under the tool till it hits the bottom of the tool. I'm going to cock it back some until the loop is centered over the wire. And that usually stands your little wire almost straight up, not entirely, but almost. Now I'm going to open the loop. And I'm going to thread it on to the, to the little loop part of my toggle ring. Snap it in there. Now I'm going to close my loop back. I might should have made a bigger loop. <laughs> I'm going to take my bent chain nose pliers and I'm going to hold hold on to my loop. This can be a little bit fiddly trying to do it with that toggle clasp in the way, but I wanted to wire wrap it directly to it. Now I'm going to take this part, and I usually do this first part with my fingers, and I'm just going to wrap it around about three times. <clears throat> I'm going to take my cutters, I'm going to cut off the extra wire. I'm going to put one of my little green rondelle beads on here and one of my <clears throat> one of the spacers that came in the box one of the 10 millimeter aventurine beads another spacer that came in the box another one of the green little green rondelle beads I'm going to take my pliers, straighten this loop up down here. He doesn't look straight. I'm going to take my pliers and I'm going to go to the very tip of the pliers because I don't want a very long neck. I need to turn this around so it's straight with the bottom loop. I'm going to bend the wire at a 90 degree angle over the top of the pliers. I'm going to put my round nose pliers in here in the crook of the pin, round those pliers facing me. I'm going to bend the wire back until it hits the bead. I'll rotate the pliers till they're facing the table. I'll hold on tight, take this part and bend it back around here up and under the tool until it hits the bottom of the tool. I'm going to cock it back until the loop is centered over the beads. Take my Bent chain those pliers. And 
my other pair of bent chain nose pliers. And I'll start my wraps. I like to try to get that first wrap good and tight. And then just keep wrapping until there's no more room to wrap. I'm going to take my cutters, cut off the extra wire, and I'm going to take my crimping pliers and I'm going to go into the part here at the end that just says the little half circles on each side, and I'm going to use th these to tuck in my little burrs that I've got left here from where I cut the wire off. Just want to be real careful when you do that because that little crystal rondelle there is on the end and you don't want to crack it. Okay, so that's what I've got so far. Now I'm going to reposition my camera for a minute because I can't really see in it very well. If I can't see in it, I can't see whether y'all can see what I'm doing. <laughs> Hold on a second. Okay, now I'm going to take another piece of my wire. And I'm going to go down about an inch and a half. Make a 90 degree angle over the tool. Take my round nose pliers and put them in the crook of the bin. Round nose pliers facing me. I bend the wire back until it hits the tool. Rotate the pliers till they're facing the table. Take the shorter piece and push it up and under there until it hits the bottom of the tool. Cock it back until the loop is centered over the wire. Now I'm going to open this one and thread it onto my little pendant here that I'm going to use. And I'm going to close it. Take my bent chain nose pliers. Hold on to my loop. Again, this can be kind of fiddly when you got that pendant in the way, but I wanted to wrap it directly to the pendant. I'm going to... My loop's about to try to get out of shape. Now I'm going to wrap this part around about three times. take my cutters and cut off the extra wire I'm going to take one of my little green rondelle beads one of the bead caps that came in the box one of my Adventuring beads. Another one of the bead caps that came in the box. And another one of the little green rondelle beads. And now I'm going to take my pliers. I'm going to go to the very tip of the pliers. Make a 90 degree turn, 90 degree bend, put my round nose pliers in, round nose pliers facing me, bend the wire back until it hits the bead, rotate the pliers till they're facing the table, hold on tight, take this part and push it up and under here until it hits the bottom of the tool, cock it back until the loop is centered over the beads. Take my bent chain nose pliers, hold on to my loop really tight. Take 
take my other bent chain of spliers, start my wraps. And just keep wrapping until there's no more room to wrap. Take my cutters and cut off the extra wire. And take my crimping pliers and carefully, without breaking my little rondel bead, tuck in the little burrs that I had left there from where I cut the wire off. I'm going to take another piece of my wire and go down about an inch and a half, make a 90 degree bend over the pliers, around those pliers in the crook of the bend, around those pliers facing me, bend the wire back until it hits the tool, rotate the pliers till they're facing the table. Take the shorter piece of wire and push it up and under until it hits the bottom of the tool. Cock it back until the loop is centered over the wire. Now I'm going to open this loop. And thread this on that I just made. And then close the loop. onto my loop. I'm going to wrap this part around about three times. Take my cutters and cut off the extra wire. Now I'm going to put one of my little green rondelle beads on here. one of the spacers from my stash. One of the eight millimeter rose quartz beads. Another spacer from my stash. Another one of the little green rondelle beads. Now I'm going to take my pliers, go to the very tip of the pliers, make a 90 degree bend over the tool, take my round nose pliers and put them in the crook of the bend, round those pliers facing me, bend the wire back until it hits the bead, rotate the pliers till they're facing the table, Hold on tight and take this part and bend it up here and under the under under here until it hits the bottom of the tool. Cock it back until the loop is centered over the beads. I'm going to take my bent chain nose pliers. And my other pair of bent chain nose pliers and start my wraps. Just wrap till there's no more room to wrap. Take my cutters. Cut off the extra wire. Take my crimping pliers and tuck in my little burrs. Being careful not to break my little rondelle.
So that's going to be the front part of my necklace and this part is going to feed through here. Kind of like kind of like that. So now the rest of it is just going to be stringing. So I'm going to get my stuff together to start my stringing and I'll be back. Okay, I, I usually make lariats about 32 inches. So I'm going to measure this and it measures out to be a little over two and a half, I don't know, two and three quarter inches. And then this part measures about two inches. And by the time I get my wire guardians and my crimp tubes on, that'll be probably another half inch. So two and a half and two and three quarters is five and a quarter inches. So I'm probably going to do a little less than 27 inches of stringing. So I've got my some of my beads poured out here. Some of my spacers, just pretty much some of everything. I'm gonna start my stringing here. And I'm just working off the spool. I just have a space uh, stopper bead on there because my wire tends to get away from me if I don't. <laughs> so I'm gonna start with a spacer and one of these little six millimeter beads and a spacer and then I'm going to do three of these gemstone chips and it's going to take me a minute to get these on here because they have very tiny little holes They're very pretty and I like them and I, I like small gemstone chips, but they have holes that are a little bit difficult to find. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to do one of the spacers from my stash. One of the eight millimeter rose quartz beads. Another spacer from my stash. And then I'm going to do a spacer that came in the box. Like that. And one of the 10 millimeter aventurine beads. And another spacer that came in the box. And then another one of my spacers. I mean, I think I said spacer, I meant bead cap. And then another one of my bead caps. Another one of the eight millimeter beads. Another one of my bead caps. And then I'm going to do three more of these little gemstone chips. And then I'm going to do one of my little spacers. One of these six millimeter beads. And one of my spacers. And then three more of the gemstone chips.
and then one of my bead caps one of the eight millimeter beads one of my bead caps one of the bead caps that came in the box one of the 10 millimeter beads one of the bead caps that came in the box one of my bead caps 8 millimeter bead one of my bead caps So that's what I've got now. Now I'm just going to repeat this. Three chips, a spacer, a six millimeter, a spacer, three chips, an eight millimeter with my bead caps around it, a ten millimeter with the bead caps that came in the box around it, another eight millimeter with my uh, bead caps around it, until I you until I get. I'm going to put three of these ten millimeters before I get into the other part of my stringing. I just don't want you all to have to wait while I do the rest of this because it takes me so long to get these little chips on here. <laughs> when I get that done, I'll be back. Okay, this is what I've got now. And I measured this and it is seven and a quarter inches. And I'm gonna connect it right here like this. And then I want this same thing on this side so that'll be 14 and a half inches and I said I wanted a little less than 27 so if I do 12 inches of my next beading part that will be 26 and a half inches so that I think that'll be all right so my next part is going to be bead stopper moved back down here before my wire gets all out of control. Okay, now I'm going to do one of my bead caps an eight millimeter another one of my bead caps an eight millimeter without bead caps one of my bead caps An eight millimeter another one of my bead caps three of these little chip beads One of my little tiny spacer beads, one of these six millimeter beads, another little tiny spacer bead, three more of the chips, And then one of my 
my bead caps, an eight millimeter bead, one of my bead caps, an eight millimeter bead without bead caps. One of my bead caps, an eight millimeter bead, and another one of my bead caps. So I'm just going to keep alternating between this little section of three chips, a spacer, a six millimeter, a spacer, three chips and three of the eight millimeter beads with bead caps around the outer two and no bead cap around the middle one until I get 12 inches of that and then I'm going to string on the other section like this one that I started out with and that should be about 26 and a half inches maybe something like that and then I'll come back and crimp it so I'll be back when I get all that done Okay, I've got this big long piece of stringing done here. I switched my bead out for a blue one hoping that you could see it better. So I'm going to crimp one side here. So I'm going to put my crimp tube on and my wire guardian. And then I'm going to go back through the other channel of my wire guardian. And I'm going to crimp it directly to my link here that I made, one of them. So I'm going to put that up through there. Now I'm going to go back through my crimp tube. Keep my wires from being crossed. Hold them apart. I'm going to take my crimping pliers and go into that second part that has the little half circle on one side and the little tooth on the other side. I'm going to go in there, lay my crimp in there. Squeeze. Now I'm going to turn it around and go in the first part that just has the little half circles on each side. And lay my crimp in there. Squeeze and fold my crimp. I'm going to tug. That's good. So now I'm going to cut off my extra wire. Now I'm going to push all this side, all this down and get ready to crimp the other side and I'll, I'll be back when I get that done. It takes a minute because these uh, little chip beads, the holes are so small they don't like to glide along the bead stringing wire like the round beads do. So I'll push it down and then I'll be back. Okay, now I'm going to crimp this other side. So I'm going to put my crimp tube on, my wire guardian, and my other, well no, first I'm going to go back through the other channel of my wire guardian. Back through my crimp tube. No. First I have to put my little link on that I want to crimp it directly onto. Now I've got to go back through my other channel of my, or my, go back through my crimp tube. And I usually try to go through a bead or two on this side to get my hands out of the way.
trying to be careful not to get my wires crossed up here and making it hard to get back through this these beads Sure, my wires are not crossed. And I want to make sure there's no slack in my piece, but I don't want it to be really tight either because I want it to be able to drape well. Looks like I got back through one of those gemstone chips. I can't believe that because they've got such tiny holes. But it looks like I'm back through one of them. Okay, now I'm going to go into that second part of the crimping pliers again. And lay my crimp in there. Squeeze. And I'm going to turn it around. And go into the first part. Lay my crimp in there. Squeeze and fold my crimp. Tug. That's good. I'm going to cut my wire off. Extra wire. Let me see if I can get this together here and show you kind of what it looks like. I know it's hard to see because it's so long. That's what I've got. So now I'm going to get my stuff together and make a little pair of earrings. I'll be back. Okay, so I'm going to take one of my pieces of my German style wire here. I'm going to take my pliers and go down about an inch and a half. Bend over the pliers at a 90 degree angle. I'm going to round those pliers, put them in the crook of the bin, round those pliers facing me. Bend the wire back until it hits the tool. Rotate the pliers till they're facing the table. Take the shorter piece of wire and push it up and under here until it hits the bottom of the tool. Cock it back until the loop is centered over the wire. Now I'm going to open my loop. Thread on my little charm here. Close my loop back. I'm going to take my bent chain those pliers and hold on and try not to damage my little charm here because it's delicate. I'm going to wrap around about three times. Cut off my extra wire. Straight 
straighten my loop down here because it doesn't look like it's very straight. Now I'm going to take one of my little green rondelle beads. One of my bead space or my bead caps, one of my eight millimeter beads, another bead cap, and another little rondelle. Now I'm going to take my pliers and I'm going to go to the tip of my pliers. Bend over at a 90 degree angle. Take my round nose pliers, put them in the crook of the bin. Round nose pliers facing me. Bend the wire back till it hits the bead. Rotate the pliers till they're facing the table. Pull this part up and under here till it hits the bottom of the tool. Rotate or cock it back until the loop is centered over the beads. Take my bent chain nose pliers and my other pair of bent chain nose pliers. Start my wraps. Trying to make sure to get that first wrap good and tight. Just wrap till there's no more room to wrap. off the extra wire. Use my crimping pliers to tuck in the little burrs that are left, but be very careful and don't crack my little rondelle bead. And I'm going to take my ear wire make sure to get it the right way because these are not double sided I'm going to open it up Thread on the little earring. Close it back. Well, there's my little earring. So I'm going to make the other one off camera and then I'll be back. Okay, there we go. A lariat and a pair of earrings made with the Bargain Bead Box Spring Blossom Collection. Uh, I think this was a really pretty box. Uh, and like I said, I, I believe it is a really good value. Uh, if you decide you want to subscribe, if you're not already subscribed, that coupon code will save you $2 off your first box. I hope you all have enjoyed this video. As always, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate those of you who have subscribed to my channel and watched my videos and liked and commented on my videos. I have a website where I sell my jewelry. It's Teresa's Handmade Jewelry, and I'll put a link to it in the description box below in case you're interested, along with a link to my Facebook and Instagram and my email. If you haven't, I'd really love it if you'd subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're notified when I upload a new video. So until next time, I hope you all have a great day. Take care. Thank you.